Staking will soon be possible on Ethereum as Ethereum is moving from proof of work to proof of stake. And you might be asking the following questions. Well, I'd like to stake Ethereum, but I don't have the 32 Ethereum uh, required or the current process is uh, too complicated. Is there an easier solution to stake an Ethereum or is it even possible to stake Ethereum with just one Ethereum. Well, if you've got these type of questions, then this video is exactly for you and I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. My name's Kieran. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. I create crypto and decentralized finance videos to make sure that you are ready for the next bull run. So hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already and let's dive into this. I'm very excited about this project and we'll be talking about a staking pool and not just any staking pool, a staking pool that's been making some waves and that is the rocket pool. Rocket Pool has been hard at work um, trying to catch up and be ready for as soon as the Beacon Chain launches. And Rocket Pool is a decentralized staking network, a proof of stake network that will allow you to stake your Ethereum, earn some interest on that Ethereum that otherwise would just be sitting on your ledger or on your wallet, not earning any interest. So that does sound very good and all the other staking options. Installing a validator is super complicated. You need to have some technical knowledge. You also have to make sure that your validator always stays online because if it doesn't, then you have to pay the penalties or you get slashed. And it's, it's a lot of hard work and this is going to make everything a lot easier. So the services that Rocket Pool offer are, first of all, you can just stake your ether with the minimum being one ethereum the maximum being a thousand ethereum and you can lock up your ether for either three months six months or 12 months and the second option if you are kind of technically savvy you can actually become a smart node operator and the fantastic thing about that is you will not have to pay any fees and the second thing is you only have to bring 16 ETH on the table. You don't have to bring the full 32 Ethereum that are necessary if you'd become a validator uh, otherwise. But with the rocket pool, you can already become a smart node validator with 16 ETH and you can stake without paying any fees. So that's already good. So I'm going into detail about how the rocket pool works, what kind of um, parts make this the whole thing work. Um, and certain different terminologies. And last but not least, I want to show you, share with you some very beautiful uh, GUI user interfaces of the Rocket Pool Smart Notes. I'm sure you'll find that super exciting. All right, so the Rocket Pool is, um, is a decentralized proof of stake network. And it's an infrastructure that allows users and businesses to earn rewards on their Ether holdings during the beacon chain. Now I won't go into detail about what the beacon chain is and, and so on. I've made a few videos on that. I'll link them down below so you can check that out if you want to um, <laughs> learn a bit about that. And what? why would you want to use a rocket pool instead of becoming a validator yourself? So for, first of all, to become a validator um, on the beacon chain, you'd need 32 Ethereum and with Rocket Pool, you could already become that with just one ETH. And second of all, by using the Rocket Pool, it's super easy. You only have to send your ETH to a smart contract. And that's basically the same thing as sending your ETH to another Ethereum address. And that's very easy. So you don't have to know all the technical aspects about um, transacting and communicating with the beacon chain. It's a lot more secure and the beacon chain, furthermore, the beacon chain will penalize and slash uh, validators that are offline. And by using the rocket pool, uh, these risks are minimized. I'll talk about how chunks work and how they minimize your risk. Um, of being penalized. And for people that are technically savvy, they can have their smart node and they only have to put 16 ETH on the table. They have to only lock up 16 ETH instead of the 32 Ethereum. So that means um, they can already 
uh, start staking with a lot lower uh, amount of ETH, which is great because to be honest, 32 ETH is definitely a massive chunk of change that you'd uh, have to um, lock up for a certain period of time. So how does Rocket Pool work? It's made out of three parts. You've got the smart contracts, I mean, smart contracts are well known in the Ethereum space. They basically make the whole blockchain work and decentralized applications would be nothing without smart contracts. Then you've got the smart node network and you've got mini pools. So the smart contracts, they're in place to accept deposits. They also manage users, keep track of various tokens and handle interactions with the beacon chain. So they do all more or less the legwork, the brain work that is involved with making sure that the whole um, rocket pool is working. Furthermore, you've got the smart node network and the smart node network is a decentralized network of special Ethereum nodes that run the smart node software. And this has got the, the smart contracts and so on. And they provide the network with the consensus required by the beacon chain. Last but not least, you've got the mini pools. And this is also another smart contract. And these contracts uh, contain groups of users pooling their ether together and staking for a specific amount of time. So if you want to stake maybe one Ethereum or two or three, then you'll be put into a mini pool and your Ethereum is going to be um, split up into chunks with each chunk being four Ethereum. And these chunks are then put into different smart nodes so that these smart nodes at the end have 32 Ethereum. I think the following visual guide is a very good um, explanation and might make things a lot easier to understand. So here we've got a user depositing um, his Ethereum into the rocket pool smart contract. Now let's say he's got four ETH that he's depositing. His four ETH is distributed into different chunks. And this is to reduce the risk, increase the security. Because if you've got um, all his uh, ETH into different nodes and one node would be offline, then it's only a small part that might be a little bit penalized. But uh, all in all, uh, he won't really notice that because the risk is diversified. So these four ETH chunks get put into different smart nodes. And a smart node, like a normal validator, needs 32 Ethereum. So for example, this is Brian and he wants to <laughs> have his own smart node and he deposits 16 ETH and the remaining um, 16 ETH that is required comes in the form of a mini pool and each of these pools has four ETH chunks. And all these together get, uh, makes a 32 Ethereum and this smart node would, Brian's smart node would be in San Francisco. All right, and that's that's basically it. The, the Ethereum gets um, split up and put into the smart nodes. There are a few other terminologies which are very important and I think it's quite smart how it's um, been implemented. So you've got the rocket pool protocol token and this is extremely important. Now you don't want to have too many smart node operators and you also don't want to have uh, none uh, on the network and that's where the rocket pool token uh, comes into play and that makes sure that the capacity of the smart node operators is regulated and balanced. I'll come, uh, I'll explain uh, in detail how that works in a bit. But first we want to talk about our ETH rocket pool beacon chain ETH token. And this is um, how the deposits plus staking rewards are paid out. And they're paid out in our ETH, which is basically uh, ERC20 token backed one by one by um, ETH2 Ethereum. I'll link down an article below that explains our ETH in detail. As if I go into detail with this, it, the, the, the video would be like uh, hours long. <laughs> and uh, that's it. So I mentioned that at the beginning, the minimum deposit um, to, to go into a mini pool would be one ETH. The maximum is 1000 ETH. The staking periods, super simple, three, six and 12 months. Now. Even though there are not many, inf there's not much information about the fees. What my 
um, thoughts are about this. I'm pretty sure that if you'd uh, stake for three months, you probably pay, pay a bit of a higher fee than if you stake for 12 months. So probably the lowest fees would be 12 months unless you become a smart node operator, which uh, doesn't pay any fees as long as he's got 16 ETH. And for if it's safe, are your funds safe? Well, they haven't done an audit. Um, the, the good thing is the, the code is open source, so you can just um, look through the code if you understand the code and check it. But um, they're planning on doing a, a different audits and the bug bounty. They haven't done it yet, but they're planning on doing that. So that's, that's very good. I'll probably be, feel a lot safer as soon as that's done and all the bugs are ironed out. So what I would like to uh, quickly address, and that is the, um, how the RPL token is used. So I mentioned about that the RPL token is for the capacity of the smart node operators. And a smart node operator has to put a certain amount of Ethereum onto, into the node, he has to lock it up. And he also has to lock up a certain amount of RPL tokens. And the price of the RPL tokens varies or the amount of RPL tokens that you need per Ethereum varies. So if the capacity is high, that means you don't really need that many more smart node operators, then the RPL to ETH ratio is uh, a lot higher. That means you'd need a lot more RPL for each Ethereum. But if the capacity is uh, super low and you need more smart node operators, then the, um, the ratio is super low and it can actually go down to zero to make sure that more smart node operators join the network. Yeah, so here it's um, basically increasing capacity when needed by incentivizing node operators to join and decreasing capacity when not needed by disincentivizing node operators uh, from joining. And if the network has plenty of capacity, then node operators uh, need more RPL to deposit. And if the network is maxed out and needs node operators to join quickly, it even drops to zero for the first one to make a deposit. So that's um, pretty straightforward. And I think it's a very good approach to make sure that there's enough uh, smart node operators um, staking. Now, the, uh, this is uh, super interesting and it, it brings the whole uh, service that Rocket, Rocket Pool offers a lot further. So let's imagine you're thinking about, you've got maybe a bunch of friends. Uh, they're not, they don't really understand that much about staking and so on. And you think, okay, maybe I'll start a business, uh, Ethereum staking business. I know it's a bit far fetched, but it's, it's an idea. And the great thing is you've got your website up. You can use the rocket pool API to allow your, uh, friends or, or people that you know to stake, uh, Ethereum using the rocket pool service, but, um, basically they're going through your website and uh, it's probably a white label and so on and you can add a fee so maybe you add a cheaper fee for your friends because you're not because you're nice and you add a, a more expensive fee staking fee for other people this will probably be on top of the rocket pool fee and yeah I think that's a good opportunity for businesses to offer staking um, they've got maybe a customer base and they want to offer um, their customers uh, the, the possibility to stake some Ethereum and uh, they can do that with the Rocket Pool API. So I think that's a fantastic way um, to outsource uh, this proof of stake service to different companies that want to use it. Now, what I'd like to share with you is the re most recent development update where they uh, show different user interfaces. And I think it's very beautiful and uh, super uh, nicely done how they put everything, how they uh, designed everything. So this is the Rocket Pool Smart Note um, general user interface. You've got the computer name, how, the, the amount of time that it's been up, the, um, the amount of Ethereum, the RETH and the Rocket Pool protocol. Um, token you've got some information about how the the smart node is operating the here's you've got the operating software the os and different net, uh, staking network utilization information 
So all in all, it looks uh, super straightforward, very easy to use, a lot easier than if you have to install your own um, validator client on your Linux or your Mac or whatever virtual machine you're using. And the, the installation process is also very easy. So here you can see the installation process. You can just click uh, add all the connection information, the host, port, username, identity, and you can just add a connection and you can install on a remote server or on your own computer. So the installation process is super straightforward with the rocket pool. Uh, I mean, I don't really have that much to say about it. it. It looks really easy. You don't really have to understand how to use a terminal. Um, it's, it's more or less a one or two click install process. So I'm excited about this. Me personally, I might, uh, I'll probably be using uh, a staking pool. I will definitely make a video on the rocket pool. So if this is something that you're interested in and I'd really appreciate and think you'd find it also valuable uh, to subscribe and click the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss it when I uh, publish that video. All right, so as you can see, it's installed and all the information. And when you've done it, you can configure your node. And here you've got two different options. You can select the ETH1 client or the ETH2 client. And this is this is pretty cool. They want to actually um, give you the option of installing many different clients so you can choose the one that you like. So as you know, there's many different companies um, uh, creating their there are Ethereum clients, for example, Lighthouse by Sigma Prime or the Prism client. I made a video about the Prism client. So as, as soon as there's more clients available, Rocket Pool wants to offer those uh, options that you can select your client that you'd use, you'd like to use for your smart node. And um, here you see the it's running more or less straightforward. There's not much more to say about that. What, one thing I'd like to mention is uh, if you're choosing if one or if two client, I think uh, the if one client is if you're the specs on the computer that you're using are low, then you prefer the if one client. All right. Yeah, more or less. That's it. Um, don't have that much more to say. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a massive uh, like. It helps out the channel. I'm trying to hit that 1K subscriber mark. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions about Rocket Pool, if you've got any comments, suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. I answer or try my best to answer all uh, the fantastic questions that are popping up. So yeah, I wish you a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.